Long ago, my young niece and I planned a fishing and camping adventure near the quiet town of Bedford, Pennsylvania, a place cherished for its peaceful landscapes. We reserved a spot at a secluded state campground by the Juniata River, eager for a relaxing break away from the noise of daily life. The campground was somewhat pricey, and the sites were generously spaced, providing both comfort and an air of eerie solitude. We chose the campsite at the farthest edge of the campground, away from everyone else, hoping for a little extra solitude. The gentle flow of the river offered a calming background, while the forest around us buzzed with the sounds of wildlife. We spent the afternoon setting up camp, enjoying the simplicity of pitching the tent, arranging our gear, and gathering firewood. The weather couldn't have been more perfect, with a light breeze stirring the leaves and the sun casting soft, dappled light through the trees. We fished by the riverbank, chatting casually and savoring the rare bond these trips brought. As night fell, we lit a fire. The flames flickered, creating a warm and cozy glow that softened the darkness closing in. The forest was transitioning to night, with birds quieting down and nocturnal creatures beginning to stir. It felt like just another peaceful night with the typical sounds of the woods. Then, around 9 or 10 p.m., something unexpected broke the stillness. We heard a woman's voice singing in the distance. It wasn't a song we recognized. It was an eerie, wordless melody. The sound was clear, floating through the trees in a way that was both beautiful and unsettling. I looked over at my niece sitting across from me, noticing the tension in her wide-eyed expression. My dog, lying comfortably by the fire, suddenly jumped up, ears alert, staring into the darkness where the sound seemed to come from. His usual vigilance made his reaction even more alarming. Did you hear that? I whispered to my niece. She glanced at me, pale in the firelight, and said, I don't hear anything, before quickly announcing she was going to bed. Her denial didn't convince me, especially since she was only a few feet away and the singing was quite loud. Clearly frightened, she seemed to think ignoring it would make it go away. The melody continued, weaving through the trees. Though it seemed to come from one direction, it had an uncanny quality that made it hard to pinpoint the source. It was as though the voice was everywhere and nowhere at once. Despite the strangeness of the sound, it didn't feel menacing. There was no sense of danger, only an eerie beauty that's hard to put into words. I suggested to my niece that we take a flashlight and explore to find the source of the singing, but she refused, retreating quickly into the tent, leaving me and the dog by the fire. For several minutes, the melody lingered. I stood there, listening intently, my dog by my side, both of us staring into the dark woods. The fire crackled softly, forming a small barrier between us and the unknown. Then, just as suddenly as it began, the singing ceased. The woods returned to their quiet state, with only the occasional rustling of leaves. I felt a mix of relief and wonder. No one could have been hiding in the woods without my dog noticing sooner. His calm but attentive stance suggested that whatever it was, it posed no immediate danger, but it was definitely unusual. The next morning, my niece and I talked about it. She eventually admitted she had heard the singing, but was too frightened to acknowledge it. We tried to make sense of it, considering echoes, animals, or perhaps other campers, but nothing seemed to fully explain what we'd experienced. In the days that followed, I searched online for similar stories from the Bedford area, but I couldn't find any clear answers. That night remained a mystery, an odd but unforgettable part of our camping memories. It serves as a reminder of the strange and inexplicable occurrences that nature sometimes holds. A few years ago, my sister and I were driving down a narrow country road near Christmas in the UK. It was late, and we were passing through a thick stretch of woods. My car slipped around a bend, lost control, 
and we ended up sliding into a ditch in a farmer's field. At first, we were both okay, though the car's bumper had come off and one of the wheels had detached. We climbed out of the car and tried calling my boyfriend, but he was at work and didn't pick up. We waited there for a long while, hoping he'd eventually see our messages. After some time, a friendly middle-aged woman stopped and suggested we head to the nearby village, where her husband could bring back a tow rope to help us out. We waited for nearly an hour, but there was still no sign of her or her husband. The cold was biting, and we were starting to lose hope. Just then, a truck pulled up, carrying two men with thick accents. They offered to pull us out and get us on our way. The truck seemed well prepared for the job, but something inside me urged me not to accept their help. Despite being stranded with nothing around but empty fields and woods, I politely declined, and they left. But about ten minutes later, they returned, insisting they couldn't leave us there and that they wanted to help. My instincts still screamed at me not to trust them, so I declined once more. This time, they ignored my refusal and started walking towards us. Suddenly, another car arrived, driven by a different man. He attached a tow rope to my car and put on a spare tire, making it drivable just enough to get to my boyfriend's workplace. It turned out this man was the husband of the woman who had stopped earlier. I had some pain in my shoulder, which I later learned was a broken collarbone. But with all the adrenaline, I hadn't felt it much at the time. I just recall this man helping us out. Here's where things get strange. When the man arrived, he mentioned he hadn't seen any truck or other people. He insisted that it was just me and my sister alone in that field. I began to wonder who were those men in the truck. Could they have been omens, spirits, or even angels? The man said his wife had told him to come help, and he'd left immediately, which didn't line up with how much time had passed. Had we been stuck in some sort of time warp? Even more puzzling, my sister later told me she didn't remember the men in the truck at all. She only recalls waiting for the woman's husband to show up. How could this happen? And why can't I remember what happened once those men got out of their truck? I've always enjoyed hiking alone. It's my way of clearing my head. And I like the peace that only the woods can offer. There's something calming about the quiet sounds of the forest and the feeling of being far from the busy world. This time, I picked a new trail, one that was deep in the woods and pretty far from any towns or busy roads. I thought it would be the perfect place to escape for a few hours. The day started off cloudy, and I noticed it was a lot quieter than usual. The birds weren't chirping much, and the wind was almost still. Even though it felt strange, I brushed it off as I started walking. The forest was beautiful in a mysterious way, and I got lost in my own thoughts as I made my way through the trees. After a few hours, I stopped to rest and take a sip of water. When I stood up to keep going, I realized I didn't know which way to go. I looked around, but nothing looked familiar. I must have walked off the main trail without noticing it, and now I couldn't find my way back. I tried to stay calm and pulled out my map and compass, hoping I could figure out which way to go. I began to retrace my steps, but somehow, I only got more confused. The deeper I went, the more everything around me looked the same. After a while, I stopped again, breathing heavily and feeling my heart race. That's when I heard it, a sound, faint at first but getting louder. It was footsteps, close enough that I knew it wasn't just my imagination. I called out, Hello? Is someone there? My voice echoed through the trees, but there was no reply. I waited a moment, listening closely, but the forest was silent again. I tried to tell myself it was probably just an animal, but as I started walking, the footsteps returned. They were slow and steady, keeping pace with me, just out of sight. I picked up my speed, hoping that if I walked fast enough, I could get away from whatever was following me. But the faster I went, the faster the footsteps went too. 
I kept glancing over my shoulder, but I couldn't see anyone. The feeling of being watched made my skin crawl, and I started to panic. Eventually, I came across a small clearing, and I stopped to catch my breath. I looked around, hoping to see a trail marker or anything familiar, but then I noticed something else instead. Nailed to a tree at the edge of the clearing was a small sign. It looked old and weathered, but I could still make out the words. You're not alone. Go back. A chill ran through me. I knew I hadn't seen the sign when I first walked through here. I felt a wave of fear wash over me, and I didn't waste any time. I turned around and started walking as fast as I could, ignoring the way my legs felt shaky. I was so scared I couldn't even think clearly, but I knew I had to get out of there. I tried to focus on finding a trail, any trail that would lead me back to my car. I could still feel that invisible presence behind me, even though I no longer heard the footsteps. I kept looking back over my shoulder, half expecting to see someone watching me. But I never saw anyone. I just kept moving, pushing myself through the forest until I finally saw the parking lot in the distance. When I reached my car, I didn't look back. I just jumped in, started the engine, and drove away as fast as I could. I didn't feel safe until I was miles away from that forest. Even now, I can't shake the feeling that something or someone was out there, following me through the trees. And whatever it was, I hope I never run into it again. A few years ago, I decided to go camping alone in a secluded area. I'd heard about this place from a friend who loves hiking as much as I do. He said it was a beautiful spot, far from any campsites or other people, and it sounded like the perfect place to spend a quiet weekend alone. I packed up my tent, some food, and my other camping gear, and I headed out early on a Friday morning. It took me most of the day to get there, and the last part of the hike was off trail, through some thick trees and rough ground. But when I finally arrived, I understood why my friend had recommended it. The spot was beautiful, surrounded by tall trees with a small clearing where I could set up my tent. It felt like I had the whole forest to myself, and I was looking forward to a peaceful night under the stars. As the sun started to set, I built a small fire and cooked a quick dinner. The only sounds were the crackling fire and the soft rustle of leaves as the wind blew through the trees. After I ate, I sat by the fire for a while, just enjoying the quiet and watching the shadows stretch out around me. It was so peaceful that I almost fell asleep right there by the fire. Eventually, I put out the fire and climbed into my tent. I got comfortable in my sleeping bag and closed my eyes, ready to drift off to sleep. But just as I was about to fall asleep, I heard something. It was faint at first, like a soft whisper, and I thought it might just be the wind. But then I heard it again, voices, somewhere in the distance. I couldn't make out any words, but the voices were low, almost like they were trying not to be heard. I sat up and listened, my heart starting to pound. I unzipped the tent and looked outside, trying to see where the voices were coming from. At first, I didn't see anything, but then I noticed a faint light moving through the trees. It was like a small lantern, swinging back and forth, coming from deeper in the forest. I thought maybe it was another camper, but it seemed strange for anyone else to be this far out, especially at night. I thought about calling out, but something stopped me. There was something unsettling about the light, the way it moved so slowly, like whoever was carrying it was in no hurry. I decided to stay in my tent and wait, hoping whoever it was would just pass by and leave. I lay back down, but I couldn't sleep. I kept listening, straining my ears to hear any other sounds. After a while, the light disappeared and the forest was quiet again. I didn't hear any more voices, but I still felt uneasy. I stayed awake most of the night, listening to every small sound. When morning finally came, I got up and decided to explore the area where I'd seen the light. I felt nervous, but I was also curious. 
I wanted to know if someone else had been out there, or if I just imagined the whole thing. As I walked through the trees, I eventually came across an old campsite. There was a torn up tent, and things were scattered everywhere. Food wrappers, clothes, and even a couple of broken dishes. It looked like someone had left in a hurry, leaving everything behind. I felt a chill as I looked around, wondering what had happened. Just as I was about to leave, I noticed something carved into one of the trees near the tent. It was a single word, help. I stared at it, feeling a growing sense of dread. I didn't know who had been here or why they had left so suddenly, but I knew one thing for sure. I didn't want to stay any longer. I quickly made my way back to my campsite, packed up my things, and started the long hike back to my car. I kept looking over my shoulder the whole way, half expecting to see that light again or hear those strange voices. I've gone camping many times since then, but I've never gone back to that spot. Something about it still haunts me, and I don't think I'll ever forget that eerie night alone in the woods.